The overall goal of this procedure is to demonstrate how to assemble and use a dual labeling DNA damage sensor that labels two major types of DNA breaks in tissue sections. The sensor is comprised of a 30-tumor DNA oligonucleotide, dual labeled with Fitzy and Rhodamine, and an enzyme, Vaccinia topoisomerase 1, or VACTOPO, that self-assembles when VACTOPO binds to the 30-tumor. The machine operation starts when topoisomerase cleaves the oligonucleotide at the 3' end of the recognition sequence, resulting in a VACTOPO-activated, Fitzy-labeled unit and a rhodamine-labeled free hairpin with a terminal 3' hydroxyl. The units are short-lived and quickly reassemble back into the original construct, which is subsequently recleaved. In the absence of additional extramolecular DNA breaks, these two units continuously separate and re-ligate in a cyclic manner. When the molecular sensor is applied to tissue sections with DNA damage, the Fitzy labeled detector unit selectively attaches to blunt-ended DNA breaks with 5' hydroxyl. The rhodamine labeled detector unit will ligate to a 5' phosphate blunt-ended break if T4 DNA ligase is present. Results are obtained that show the presence and distribution of DNAs 1 and DNAs 2 type DNA breaks in cells based on fluorescence microscopy. The main advantage of this technique over existing methods for apoptosis detection, like tunnel, is that it is more specific and provides additional information by labeling both self-autonomous and phagocytic phases of apoptosis. From the nanotechnology perspective, the sensor exemplifies a bio-enabled approach that adapts actual biological structures and architectures to the construction of non-toxic molecular scale devices. Generally, individuals new to this method might struggle because its success depends on using a highly active toprosomerase preparation and the correct processing of sections to avoid overdigestion by protonase K. The tissue sections for this procedure should be prepared prior to the assembly of the molecular device. 5 to 6 micron thick sections cut from paraformaldehyde fixed paraffin embedded tissue blocks are recommended. Place the slide with the tissue section in a slide rack and de-wax in xylene for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, transfer to a fresh xylene bath for an additional 5 minutes. Rehydrate the section by passing the slide through these graded ethanol concentrations. 96% ethanol 2 times for 5 minutes each, 80% ethanol for 5 minutes, followed by water 2 times for 5 minutes each. After rehydration, digest the section with proteinase K using 100 microliters of a 50 microgram per milliliter solution per section. Incubate for 15 minutes at room temperature in a humidified chamber. Depending on the tissue type, the time of digest may need to be adjusted, but be careful to avoid overdigestion as it causes signal disappearance and section disruption. When the digestion is complete, rinse the slide in distilled water twice for 10 minutes each. Apply 2% BSA for pre-blocking. Incubate for 15 minutes at room temperature in a humidified chamber. During this time, assemble the molecular machine as shown next in this video. All reagents for assembly of the molecular machine are scaled for a total volume of 25 microliters, which is sufficient for a single detection in an average size tissue section. The volume can be scaled up as needed. In a small plastic tube, combine the following reagents in this order. By distilled water, 15% polyethylene glycol 8000, T4 DNA ligase buffer, dual labeled oligonucleotide, vaccinia topoisomerase 1, and T4 DNA ligase. Mix gently by pipetting. The molecular construct will almost instantly self-assemble in this solution and can be used immediately at room temperature. Two
To begin the procedure for labeling DNA breaks, aspirate the pre-blocking solution from the slide. Apply 25 microliters of the full reaction mix to each section. Place a plastic cover slip over the section and place the slide into a humidified chamber. Protect from light by wrapping the chamber with aluminum foil and incubate for one hour at room temperature. Although both ligase and topo signals can be observed after the one hour incubation, in many instances the ligase signal can be further enhanced. To enhance the signal, reapply the reaction mix without VAC topo and oligonucleotide 1, but with oligonucleotide 3 and T4 DNA ligase. Place a plastic cover slip on the section and incubate in a humidified chamber for 18 hours at room temperature. On the following day, gently immerse the slide vertically in a Coplin jar containing water at room temperature to remove the cover slip. Then wash the section in distilled water three times for 10 minutes each. Rinse the section with sodium bicarbonate buffer. This alkaline solution rinse enhances Fitzy fluorescence, which is pH sensitive and is significantly reduced below a pH of 7. Finally, cover the section with an anti-fading solution that also contains DAPI for counterstaining nuclei and apply a cover slip. The sections are now ready for fluorescent microscopy. Shown in this figure is a tissue section of dexamethasone treated thymus, where the molecular machine has detected DNAs1 and DNAs2 type blunt ended DNA breaks in the thymic cortical areas undergoing apoptosis. Green cytoplasmic fluorescence, indicating DNAs2 type breaks, marks cortical macrophages digesting nuclear material of apoptotic thymocytes. This signal is produced by VAC topo and localizes to phagolysosomes with DNA containing 5' hydroxyl double-strand breaks. Red fluorescence, indicating DNA's one type breaks, labels nuclei of apoptotic thymocytes not engulfed by macrophages. Massive numbers of thymocytes simultaneously undergo apoptosis, accompanied by generation of 5' phosphate double-strand breaks, visualized by ligase-based labeling. These breaks are located at the nuclear periphery and form ring-shaped patterns. All cellular nuclei are in blue, visualized by counterstaining with DAPI. While attempting this procedure, it's important to remember never to allow the sections to become dry in between additions of different solutions. Also, keep all enzymatic preparations on ice prior to adding to sections and protect your fluorescent probes from light during the labeling reaction. After its development, the technique permitted visualization of all phases of apoptotic cell disassembly. This sensor itself is an example of the green nanotech approach to the design of nanoscale particles, probes, and machines. This approach combines artificial components with naturally occurring molecular machine parts. The goal is to eliminate toxicity and adverse biological reactivity of these highly dispersed nanomaterials.